Well, it's another good morning from myself here at the studio. The studio that you will soon be involved in working out in. Um, hello and welcome. It's Wednesday morning. I have to remind myself what day it is because it still does not feel like a normal kind of week to anyone in COVID. Today we are on video number 73. It's part of the Alphabet Pilates Strength Series, which goes A to E, finishing on Friday with a finale. Um, good morning, Kay, and good morning, Margaret. Pilates Strength today, the A will always stand for trunk, and the idea is you'll always do an A with another letter. Today it's going to be sides, everything from sides, through your obliques, through your side bottom, through your side bum area, um, side thigh area, everything to do with what you hate is the truth, because it's our weakest area. Good morning, Emily and Susan. It's A plus C, which is your abdominal trunk area and your sides. Good morning, Kirsty. When you do the workout today, if anything doesn't feel good, then you stop and notice. I can guarantee, good morning, Sarah and Anne and Ken. I can guarantee that if something doesn't feel right, you've twisted the pelvis. Now, when we do a side workout, the sides involved side bending from the right place and rotation from the right place and when the legs move they require lifting and lowering from the right place the right place will always be your neutral pelvic position the two things that deviate in anything to do with sides are that either the rib cage you twist way beyond it or the side pelvic area you twist your pelvis be aware of those things if you have an issue during this workout sequence that's the place to go to, pelvis or the twist is coming too low down, rib cage going too low down in towards the lower back. Whichever way we want to do this, we have to get on with it. It's going to be hard. Enjoy the moment. The little series when it comes to it inside lying will be a killer. So breathe deeply, have rest in between if I haven't finished and by all means swear at the screen, which apparently is a common occurrence. Good morning, Mena, and good morning, Thomas. We are going to start then standing, a bit like we did um, on the legs version, just for our opener. It's not going to be very long. I do need to get you warm and mobile. Good morning, Sarah, too. Your squat shape is where you'll go. Just a reminder, you will be going to lying on your back eventually, and you may want a thigh, knee squeezer, head cushion, whichever way you want to see that. If you've got it, um, grab it. Good morning, Leslie. And here we go. We're going down into the squat and back up. Remember, if you're someone, and there are people in the room who are this, who doesn't find it easy to stabilise your squat, then take your arms backwards to resist your chest dropping too low. Use your breath in to hinge at the hip, breath out to push through the ground, pushing the earth away from you and pulling down in towards the ground. Good morning, Lindsay from Aversock, I suspect. So you pull the ground down, pull your bum backwards, push the ground away. Pulling the ground down and pushing the ground away. You're breathing deeply in and out. Good morning, Donna. As you're breathing deeply in and out, we're priming the systems. It's a global connection, but your breath makes it a Pilates connection, assuming that the breath is going straight to your abdominal core area. Stay down in this squat just for one moment. A bit of a kind of technical moment. Breath out to do your gentle pelvic tilt. Remember, Thomas, it's gentle. The breath out. Find your pelvic floor, take the lumbar into a little bit of a re release and return. Exhale, pelvic floor, navel to spine, feel the hip bones just gently, fractionally rotate or tilt the pelvis and return. Two more, use your breath out. <sighs> Inhaling, don't let the chest drop or the rib cage move. Exhaling and pelvic tilt, Susan, don't use your ribs. In terms of don't bend the rib cage as part of this. People from here then, we're going to go into the star, so your squat, star. It's still a wide leg squat, but you are staying in parallel and you're landing your squat and pushing your leg away. Land and push, I slow it down. I realise I've got lots to get through and I tend to hair off at a pace. Down into your squat and push it into your breathe. I would use the breath out to push the earth away into your star and the breath in to come down to the ground. It's not that when you go down to the ground, you want to be collapsing. It's that you know the inhale stabilizes the trunk as you take yourself down and push yourself back up. Into that squat. 
The best way to play with the squat to star is to play with pace. There should be moments where you can actually balance and it is harder on these thicker blue cushioned mats but it's beneficial for ankle stability so your archers and your ankle stabilizers have to work harder it's like working on an instability cushion really so inhaling exhale strong arms and legs we're only going to do once more each side before we stay once more to the other side go back the way you came and here you'll stay and pull arms forwards and back the notice moment here is the side bottom on the leg that you push if you imagine pulling the air backwards as you go forwards into the lunge squat type shape and then you push into your star if you pull your arms back as you push the ground away it's as though gravity is heavy the air you're pulling against with your arms is heavy and that helps get the core connection from the side bottom to your obliques last time other side breathe out either take the star wide or take your arms remember the squat you'd still look down and if you're putting your arms by your sides it may help, may help you keep shoulder stabilization inhaling down you go and strong pullback now both sides of the abductors that's the side leg muscles are involved in your workout the side that pushes up and down, flexing and extending, and the side that's lifting and lowering in space, your gesture leg. Do three more. Two more. Take your head with the lean. One more. And land in your lunge. Allow the head, neck and shoulders to relax. Pull your chin to your throat, look down your feet, make sure they're level. Big breath in. Breathing out is a ragdoll chin to chest. Breathe in again. Keep the legs bent, breathe out and ripple through the spine. Feel your upper back stretch until you end it with your hands to the floor, keeping your legs bent. Your head is hanging, your legs are bent, you've got symmetry. Breath out, straightening the legs, breath in and bend. This is your chance to make sure that the bend and stretch goes to your hamstrings and isn't your bottom tipping and tilting. You've got two more here, we're just releasing, creating space in the um, hip and the back of the thigh. People, the next time your legs are bent, put your hands onto your thighs, breathe in. Breathe out, pelvic tilt to return your spinal position back to standing as your legs straighten. It's now time for the ground. If you do have a head pad cushion, we're going to use it as a knee squeezer okay it's a knee squeezer pad good morning margaret glad you could join us from this position then just breathe deeply in and out of your rib cage part of the spine remember this is where the workout if you the rules apply if it's too intense and goes to the wrong side rest it out look observe and learn and then join in at a point where you feel safe we're going to sit up tall as you understand Feel both sit bones equal to the mat. Have your arms reaching. Big breath out to forwards bend the spine. Big breath in to get the spine back up. Exhaling. Squeeze on the pad as you forwards bend the rib cage over the breast area. Exhaling. Nose ends up pointing down to your knee. Squeeze the pad or points to mid thighs. Just one more as you go from forwards bend. To extend. Now straighten your legs out, sitting up really tall. You're going to take one arm back, touch the floor with it, one arm forward, pull your toes to your nose and then switch. The arms are moving as though you're running, they go from bent to straight. Once you've got this going, keeping the pelvis stable, keeping a seated neutral position, you can then start to turn the head to look. Now the arms aren't going to twist, they're still going to stay in their parallel connection. It's as though you're running with a head turn. You don't tend to run with a head turn, it's more of a swim, isn't it? But anyway, the arms are doing much more of a, if you were running, you'd be like this. And you'd be looking straight ahead. I'm wanting a bit of rotation to prep you for what's happening in all of the oblique work and the side bends. 
Just do two more. This should be mobilizing you. It's the shoulder that leads the turn, the shoulder. If you're struggling, I'll do a couple more of these, to know where to pull from for a twist, pull from the back of the shoulder blade, back of the shoulder blade. All right, last one, and let that go. Pull the legs back and roll off your sit bones so you're already in an abdominal connect. Take your arms here, exhale and row your arms back and forwards. Exhale, bend and increase the flex. Imagine you're holding onto um, an oar or you're holding onto the reformer ropes. As you pull back, increasing the depth of flexion and forwards. I'm never quite coming upright. And really, if you wanted a visual gaze, you'd stare at your pad between your thighs. Breathing out, squeeze the pad, breathing in return. The movement you're getting done right now is your inner thigh connection through pelvic floor, that's the pad. As you roll off your sit bones, that's your obliques. As you pull your arms back, it increases the obliques. And we're warming up there for pelvic stabilisation along with oblique trunk stability. If you're not breathing, you're going nowhere. Keep this going. You're now going to allow yourself to row to one side. Keep the pull down one side of the um, thigh. I'm pulling the side of the thigh nearest the screen that I would look at if I want to. You can look if you want, down at your elbow as you pull back and forwards, or look at your hands. You only pull back as far as you can maintain everything staying in your hip flexors and largely the obliques. Three more this side. Pull on that pad to help the pelvis stay true and make sure this starts to go obliquey. Are you ready? Go through centre again and pull back. Make the emphasis on the pelvic tilt. Squeeze on the pad. Pelvic tilt. Your inner thighs are also sides, aren't they? The inner sides are working really hard unless you forgot the pad was there. Okay, people are going the other side. You pull. Slide your thumbs up and down the leg as you think of that as the rowing connection. If your thigh bones have parted, in other words, if they're twisting away from each other, then your inner thigh, your adductor to pelvic floor, is not functioning as part of your core. Exhaling backwards you go. Inhale, up you come. Breathe out, squeeze the pad, backwards you go, maintaining pelvic stability sequence neutral to imprint to neutral. So here goes imprinting, pelvic tilting, here goes a slight release. Elbows come back, fist to hips. Okay, we're going to go one side. Inhale and up. Inhale, forwards reach your feet. Exhale, imagine you're in that rowboat. Squeeze on the pad and push. Squeezing on the pad and push. Squeezing on the pad. Push two more. One more. And straighten those legs out. Exhaling then, reach for your toes. Forward. Hold on to the soles of your feet if you can and take some deep breaths in and out. And again, deep breathing in and out. There's one more position I want to do, so you're going to fold the legs back to bent. Um, no you're not, you're going to keep them straight, forgive me. You're going to keep your legs straight, get your running arms ready and exhale, pull one leg up, push it away and pull the other leg up. Whichever way, pull, elbow, elbow and elbow. Now if you're doing this and you're managing, with a slight backwards lean, add a bit of a tilt and then curl into it. So curl, it's like a bit of a teaser. You're not necessarily wanting to twist, but there'll be a bit of an emphasis of a twist as you find your way up. I'm gonna make it obvious, up and down, up and down. It doesn't matter if the arms aren't identical, what you do want is the feeling of pulling forwards and bending the ribs as you lift your knee up. You could be doing it like this. It doesn't matter, it's still the trunk and the flexors working 
and you will be dying, which is what I say, it's plot is strength. Last two, last one, and let that go, take your pad with you and lay the spine all the way down. If you want to put your head pad under your head for a moment, um, it matters that I slow down, I think for your sakes. <laughs> and put your feet tight together we're going straight into your ab curl so big breath in exhaling curl and hold exhale pull one leg up in the air breathe and then push your other leg so you're now in your straight leg left leg right leg bent put your hands under your head breathe out it's now chant for the obliques at the rib cage end to get involved in the workout. Breath out. Two more. Strong legs. One more. Switch legs. Are you ready? Exhale. So I'm curling up centered. I'm not rotating anywhere. The obliques will work because I've made the legs asymmetrical in their uh, positioning. You're now getting deep. Rib cage to navel, workload, that's your obliques. Resist the twist at this point, you've got one more, and pull both knees in. Hold your hands um, behind the thighs, you are definitely in imprint. As you breathe out, you're going to curl up, lower the legs to tap the floor, breathe in, breathe out and pull the legs back and roll the spine back down. Inhaling, exhale, curl. Lower the legs down to touch. You'll feel the lower fibers of the abdominals. Pull them back up and roll the spine back down. It's four breaths at this point. Exhaling, chin nod. The legs lower down. You assist the shoulder blades staying off the floor by holding through the back of the thigh and having a strong arm. Last time. Away they go, lowering to wake up the lower fibers of the transversus, lifting back up, and down you go. Now straighten out one leg, and straighten out the other leg. You've created your L. Reach both hands up to this leg that's straight. Have both legs full of energy. The leg that's um, lower to the ground is as low as you can keep an imprint of your lower back. So exhaling, curl, switch legs, breathe in and switch legs, breathe in. I'm staring at the leg that reaches away from me. In reality, you end up with a complete hip stretch of the leg that lowers as far as you can maintain your imprint. If you want to pull this leg in to assist yourself, you can, but if you want a really deep oblique work, then simply keep reaching for the ankle. Keep the crown of the head to the ceiling, sniff in. Exhaling, switch, breath in and switch breathe in and switch breathe in switch two more one more pull both legs in and pull your knees into your chest what we're going to do here is go straight onto our kneeling position to open your hip so you're kneeling up my glasses are completely steamed up and i've got a fan on so that tells me something about what you'll be experiencing if your thigh bones are parallel, um, because I want to work your sides, you really do need to keep the hip flexor from being, yes, activated, but not constantly staying short and crampy. Keep your arms reaching backwards. That means your arms are behind from the shoulder area. Exhaling then, lean back, feel the hip flexor exhale and return. You've got 10 of these. I'm doing it to open the hip ready for your side lying shape. The hamstring should get involved and the backward lean, your pubic bone is tilted forwards. People like Sarah Butler, you're definitely tilted under to make you more neutral. And it's all hamstring glute. Um, Sarah round makes your ribs connect to the belly button. Some of you might be better off having your hands across your chest. Whichever way, the front of the thigh has to feel the length. So Anne Barron, you to put, um, have your feet flexed, remember, for this. If you find you touch one heel before the other, or it's a directional cue, you may get nowhere near there, then it means you're twisting. Your aim is to stare straight ahead. You're almost better off having your head slightly forwards of the um, sternum 
um, to get this to um, completely stabilize and mobilize the muscle group at the front. Okay, we've got one more. And let that go. From that position there, then you're going to go to your side line. And I'm actually going to take my glasses off because I can't see a thing through them. I'm using a head pad. You don't have to. You do have to get your hair out of your mouth and face, though. Guess who arrived at work without a hair clips? Me. Your position. I stopped babbling. Your position is going to be both legs bent, one leg stacked on top of the other. And then either arm under your head or use a head cushion, whatever is more comfortable for you, but make sure your shoulders are centered. You will get away with doing this activity without properly using your core. Try not to. I've got my gap between my waist and the floor on the side I'm lying. I call this the bookend. In other words, my thigh bone and shin are 90 degrees. It's like opening a book and closing a book. Everyone, hand on hip bone. Exhale. It's a hard copy. Open the book and close the book. Your leg is the book cover. You push down on one leg and pull down and push away on the other. So imagine you're um, resisting a spring pushing you up and then going against the spring to close it down. You're controlling the journey up and the journey down. If this is in the wrong place, in other words, if this isn't in the side bottom side, you've either tucked under or you've twisted, okay? You don't want to be those. People like Sarah Butler, you lordotics, you definitely need a pelvic tilt to put you into neutral. The way to explore is to just play around with, if I tuck under more, or if I go a little bit more into extension, does that change the recruitment pattern of the thigh bone? People, the next time you go up, you're going to stay up. So exhale, there's about 10. Now we've got kissing knees and heels. So you kiss the knee, and then you turn the thigh bone and kiss the heel, without rolling back. Exhale to knee kiss, inhale to heel kiss. Exhale, rotate your thigh bone. And it's like the heel goes high, the knee goes low, the knee goes high, the heel goes low. By keeping my hand on the pelvic position, I can feel everything to do with pelvic stability. There is no bony movement here. Yes, my thigh bone muscles are articulating to lead me into what we call medial, which is the kiss of the knee, and lateral rotators, which is the heel kiss. And knees kiss, heels kiss, breathe deeply. Knees kiss, waking up what we call the medialis um, connection into the pelvis, okay? The next time you find yourself parallel stay, we're moving on from here. Push your legs straight, check that both thigh bones are level, that means you haven't rolled, and then pull the heel back. It's a kick and a bend. Exhale, push into um, heel reach, inhale, bend. Exhale and kick. Inhale, bend. You're now deeply getting into your abductors and side stabilizers. If it's too intense, have a rest. We're only halfway through this sequence. Four more. Four and three and two and one. And now I'm going to let you take that leg to here and stay. Lower it and lifting it. Now, the area that we were working suddenly calms down a tad. If it's not calming down in what I call an active rest, then let it stay down like that and join in when it's recovered. Exhaling. You know when you're doing too much, when that ends up as a constant pinpoint pain, as in overly active. If the uh, movement pattern is globalised around the whole global glute area, side, thigh to some degree, then you know it's safe to continue. I can't emphasize enough that if you do the emphasis on breathing, you'll find the leg is almost lighter because rather than just hanging into your leg muscles, you're stabilizing from the rib cage to the top of the iliac crest, the hip bone. People, the next time your leg's straight, leave it straight. Now pull it forwards and send it up and over and back. Inhale, pull it forwards. Exhale, rainbow it over and forwards we go over the other leg, exhale and back, forward you go, exhale and back. You're now going to do it the other way around, 
up and over to go forwards and pull back pointing the toe up and over it's like a semicircle pull back pointing the toe up and over flexing at the ankle ideally pushing at the toe over you go and pulling backwards two more and last one now I'm horrible so you're going to do very small circles with the leg pointed go back to the knowledge of pelvic neutral as you circle the thigh bone within the pelvis don't be um, upset with yourself if you're finding it intense I'm finding it intense and it's meant to be draw the circle the other way flex at the heel press the underneath leg down against the ground keep your neck out of it for four and three the pull back and two pull back and one pull back and let that go you're going to come up onto kneeling and in the kneeling position right up there if you can um, push pull your arms either sides of your head do so if that takes you because your shoulders are too tight too stiff I'm gonna say do this so if your range around the shoulder allows this then use it otherwise use this like a praying hand whichever way you're going to be taking your body into side bends but you first of all make sure you've got your um, pelvic connection make both hip bones level as you exhale side inhale and center breathe out pelvic floor nervous spine over to the side by holding your arms by your ears if indeed you can do this shape it's all dependent on shoulder stability then you'll find it's a pleasant way of just freeing up the sides that have been really asked to work on the side by Mary your side that you've just worked should know far more about life than the other side last time and from there put your hands on the floor in front of you the leg that you've just had um, as the top leg takes it sideways now my mobility is great around the hips if you struggle if you're on a mat you take the leg further back probably lined up with your foot more than your knee whichever way to get down into the stretch our elbows bend and we sit the bottom back staying centered as though we're trying to still keep our all fours connect in holding this position here then if i was to see you your pelvis would be completely level your head's allowed to hang you're breathing deeply in and out and the stretch is going all the way through the inside of the thigh keep breathing in and out in and out and come back up again you're now ready to do the other side of side lying so take up by pad and move we're going the other way around remember your lineup is better off using the back end of the mat get the hair out of the way Ken and Tom <laughs> and then get your head on the mat um, choose your shape I, I like putting my hands across my shoulder once my shoulders are where they belong legs are in tabletop um, but side lying tabletop as it were in other words you've got nine degrees at the hip and your waist is off the floor on the side you're lying flex at the ankle both kneecaps level put your hands on your hip bones you've got everything aligned breathe out and lift breathe in and lower focus on the thigh bone being lifted by the thigh not by the foot the foot and the lower limb follow your pelvic floor draws up Enable to spine command to keep the pelvic stability. So this is side lying pelvic stability. And the hardest place on most postures is sides because we don't live life sideways, yet we still need that 3D connection with um, our posture. Do me one more here. And stay. You've now got kissing the knee and kissing the heel exhaling inhale and your medial and your lateral go back to the origin of the thigh within the pelvis to originate with your movement to turn and turn as is 
So mobilize, stabilize. All the while, because my obliques are working, in other words, my side trunk muscles, I'm getting a strong connection through the pelvis rather than just hoping the best from my legs. The hip bone stays, this is your iliac press, it stays completely stabilized, giving space for the thigh bone within the pelvis to work these muscles that are relatively weak. The next one is the last one, stay. You've now got both thighs are still level, leg kick and pull back. If you wanted to put your hand on your thigh to make sure that actually it's the lower limb kicking forwards, flexed at the ankle, and then the knee bending, it might give you some feedback. The other thing you could do is put it at the front of the thigh, um, the insertion to the pelvis, and it'll help you not move your pelvis as you kick. Now my hamstrings are long, they're not long, they're just normal length, but therefore some of you might have your kick further away. It doesn't matter, it just matters. In fact, you could argue, I've just tried this, that that gives you far more hamstring. So if you're someone who struggles with the hamstring length, kick away and away. I would say that's more functional. Just discovered something. Okay, people, that was your last kick away. Then you're going to sweep backwards and stay here. Ready for the up and over and up and over. Remember, if you needed to rest here, I probably missed out a phase, I can't remember. Yeah, I did a lift and lower. So either keep, I'm going to keep the up and over going. We may as well, it's not going to change anyone's life. But if you needed a rest at this point, then take one. All I can tell you is, um, when I use my right hand side, which is the one I'm using now, I get a great reaction. I can kind of cruise through the activities. Yes, they're demanding, but there's much um, better connection and strength. So don't be surprised if one side feels great and the other side rubbish. All right, we're going to change that to the other way around. So up and over, under and up, under and up. <laughs> and I've appreciated that I actually was doing big circles. That's what happens when you have too much in the program. Big circles. So I'm now going to do the big circles alternating each time. It goes up and over. And then we go back the way we came, or you can go under, whichever way. People, as long as the leg is lifting against gravity, life will go well. And you're gonna stay then still as we pull forwards and back. Exhaling, heel, inhale, point. Breathe out. Breathe in and reach. Breathe out. Inhale and reach, I'm walking and chasing time. Inhale and out, exhale and reach, forward you go, last time, and allow that to go. You're coming straight up into kneeling, I'm only halfway through my leg work, oh no. Okay people, straight into kneeling, this matters as well. Go back into, um, sorry, go back into your all fours, and take your other leg out this time, the leg that's just been working, take it out, we need it to have a stretch. Bend your elbows into that stretch. It's a stretch that should become familiar. You haven't tucked your bottom under. I have the privilege of being able to get my forearms on the ground, but I can do that just because I'm a Pilates teacher, I suspect, and I do this every day. Whichever way, remember this leg that's out can be to the back of your mat, in other words, lined up with your back foot, or it can stay lined up with your knee. What you can't have is twist and shift in the pelvis. Holding that shape, keep breathing, you're having a most needed stretch. Breathe, breathe, breathe. And you're gonna come back onto kneeling position. Take the leg out that you haven't had out. And don't worry, we're not going, we're going into a side stretch. Your arms are going to go T-shape, big breath in. Your pelvis is neutral, so people that are lordotic, you know what to do. Exhale and down you go, and your hand to earth. Inhale and reach. If you want to look down, do. You're going to hold this lengthened position, inhaling and exhaling. So you can feel all of your side muscles from the hip bone to the armpit, side bottom even. I'm shrinking and holding here. On my next breath out, I'll take my arm to here and guide the body through the T-centered neutral moment. Exhale, I go the other way reaching down, turn and have a look if you want to. And again, your arm can only stay straight if indeed 
that is good for you. Otherwise, put your hand to your chest. Don't be afraid of letting your head look down, but do not let the pelvic neutral go. I'm working really hard at keeping the um, pubis forwards because it's exotic. And you're going to go over again. So exhaling to the ground. Inhale to the reach. And exhaling this time up through the T. And over the other side. Inhale to the reach. The bend, remember, is always rib cage bend. There's no pain anywhere. I've not collapsed at the pelvis. I'm keeping pelvic floor and spine. And find your T again. You're going to change sides. Attention to detail is heel and kneeling leg level. I'm not turned out at the knee and my hip already feels um, connection and activation. Find your T-shape, big breath in. Exhaling over to the ground, you draw yourself. Breathe in, breathe out and extend and reach. Big breath in for your first sequence. Know where this position is. You're parting company from hip bone to rib cage you're not coming at the underneath waist there. I can feel my obliques working. There's a cinching in in this area here at the bottom hip. And to come out of shape, you'll push your arm and follow to see. Breathe in. Exhaling to the side you go. Breathe. Refuse to forget your pelvis. So your pelvic shape is staying continuously, opening the flexor, getting into your oblique area. Breathe and up through the tear game, breathe. Exhaling, pull the ground to you and you to the ground with control. Inhale and reach. Exhale, inhale and exhaling. Feel the obliques, draw you up, no movement of the pelvis. Exhaling, remember if you need to turn and look, that's fine. What isn't fine is twisting. What is fine is shortening the lever to accommodate a shoulder. And if you have shortened the lever, I suggest you definitely need to turn and look um, at the leg you're bending and the rib cage too. And then from there, find yourself back up here. Pull both knees together. Organize your clothing, of course. And you're going to take your bottom back, shrink, lower down in the direction of the um, heels, and then find the head rolling. So you're ending up in your child's pose. If you can get your head to the floor, do. If you can't, put your head onto your forearms. And here you'll breathe deeply in and deeply out. So head on forearms, your lower back, your hips, everything feeling lovely. Inhaling and exhaling. And your final stretch, take yourself full frontal. And this again honors the hip that we've had to work um, through its sides. Get the body as long as it can possibly get. Reaching those legs, those feet, making the feet heavy. Have your hands more or less under the shoulder area, not the chin in, forearms are flat on the floor. Exhale to pubic bone connection and strong activated legs. Inhale to push the nose forwards. And exhale, just come up incrementally and stay Keeping the last rib on the floor, keeping the pubic bone to the floor, keeping the legs reaching. You're asking the upper body to just stretch out through the upper back, breathe, and then push further away. As far as your body allows you to go, don't let the shoulders come up to your neck. Keep breathing, 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 the front hip getting a lovely open position. And then slowly melt down through the abdominal area and nose to the floor. People, you're going to come back up by pushing your hands under your shoulders, pulling your bottom back in the direction of the hips, having a final reaching stretch just here. So you're back into a reaching child's pose. My hands are either side of my mat. I'm going to allow my left hand to find my right hand so that I lengthen the stretch down the left hand side of my body. Leave your head hanging, my hips haven't twisted, but I've got a left hand side increased length of oblique. Breathe deeply in and out here, and then fan that arm back to the left. The left hand slides back to where it was, and the right hand slides on top of the left, and I have the same here. 
Now if that's horrible on your shoulders, just bend your right elbow and go to the floor and push it away every now and again. See if you can get a little bit more reach through the obliques. Whichever way, you're now ready to centre again. From the hands reaching, exhale pelvic tilt and start to drag your hands as you roll yourself up, moving beautifully through the spine until you're up tall. You can roll your shoulders and you're finished for this week's session in terms of abdominals and sides. I hope it really was sides and side bum. If you really want to advance your ability through your sides, then this routine is the one to be done. Um, I missed out about four exercises. Um, I'll find a way of doing those. I might do them actually making Tom do them on fi final Friday. We'll see. Whichever way, they'll end up in your programming to give you a real side bottom, side abductor, side waist hit. Okay, bye for now. And I will see you all very, very soon here. Although I realise some of you will stay using the videos and the others that we're going to create. Take care, stay well so that you can come back to the studio happy.